Mm. Plus, I my, one of my last job was working for a record company, a record distribution company. I knew retail. Only thing I haven't done to records is sold them over, in, sold them in a retail store. I've never mm. owned a retail store. I've always been on the wholesale end. So the part that I I learned working at Record Shack, and then later on hooking up with Swamp Dog a few years later, it all came together. So even before I hooked up with Swamp Dog. I had a, I had a, um, because of Record Shack, I had a, a, a cold ass street distribution network, cold. So Man. I started selling my bootlegs, my, my Z rocks and my, uh, my cut ups and, and, uh, um, what was it? house party. And I, I made a bunch of underground records. I was selling them direct to stores because I had the list of all the stores. Damn, and then so cool. I got with Swamp Dog. I just blew, I just expanded that list and made it a country made it a uh, countrywide situation. And everybody wanted to have what I knew. And it, it, I just stumbled upon it. it wasn't something I was out to do. And that's how Easy and I became cool because everything Easy needed, he had to get it from me. He, he wanted to get to the swap meets. He had to come to me because the swap meets won't sell to you unless they're gonna uh, they can give you get they can get a new product. Because understand the record business. The record business is mm. the only business one of the few businesses. It has 100% returns. If your record is whack, give me my money back or give me some back. new product. Okay? Mm -hmm. So they wouldn't buy from Easy in the beginning because he didn't. nobody knew him. But I knew him. <laughs> so they would take his records in. Okay? And sometimes I had to co-sign. Oh, if you don't do it, I'll I make it right. Don't worry about it. Shit like that. Okay? And get on K-Day. Greg Mack wouldn't touch him. Okay? But he was one of my buddies. So after, after about four or five edits, Greg Mack finally put him on the radio and the record blew up. So these yeah. are the kind of things that um, most people um, most people don't really understand my role in everything. And not, 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 I'm not a hell of a rapper, man. I ain't going to never be in the top 1,000 rappers. <laughs> I provided so many platforms for everybody. You know, the clubs, the distribution network. Uh, later on, I, bought my, I, I created my own distribution network called West Coast Record Distributors. Yep. We distributed J.J. Fad, Rodney Owen, Joe Cooley, uh, King T's first record, West Coast Wax. Um, mm. Go to uh, go to Google, I mean, go to YouTube, type in West Coast Wax, and you'll see me on the front cover with my, my old school uh, Letterman's jacket, Lonzo down the front of it. So, and that's how, that was the same, same distribution company that we distributed um, uh, country compilation on. So, once you've been around, like with McCola, and start understanding it's basically shipping and receiving uh, pluses and minuses. It's, it's the same thing. And, you know, because we made our own records, it was almost a natural uh, distribution for us to go to the next level when it, when it, when it came to this next level when it came to distribution. Mm. Damn, I love hearing all that old shit, man. That's that's so cool to me how you guys have maneuvered so much back then. Um, yeah, let's get, we got a lot of questions, so let's try to move on. We'll try to get to all of your questions, guys. Um, seems like people really like these, these behind the scenes stories. And this may be something that Dr. Dre himself can answer. I don't even know if he can answer this. Um, so how did Dr. Dre grow to hate Jerry Heller then? Did Easy cause Dr. Dre to not like Jerry Heller no more over their new business dealings with Ruthless? Well, understand this. This is something, y'all put your thinking caps on for a minute. And let's go back, okay? In the 70s, in the 60s and 70s. Keep talking. I'm going to step away for 30 seconds. Okay. In the 60s and 70s, think about every band you ever could think of. Every band you could ever think of, the lead singer was always pulled away from the group and went solo. Every band you could think of, Michael Jackson, Beyonce, uh, Lionel Richie from the Commodores, uh, the Temptations. That was always the game plan. Every time there's a group, there's a group, the lead singer always get pulled away from the group. Okay? And he gets he gets spun off, get his own situation. Unfortunately, for the roof of the situation, although Easy was the main, was the was the uh, the quote unquote Lead singer, he wasn't he wasn't the powerhouse behind Ruthless Records. It was Dre's music. Jerry Heller didn't understand that. Okay. Um Jerry Heller didn't understand that it wasn't easy vocals that made Ruthless, it was Dre's music. 
So when they originally formed the Ruthless family, Dre, uh, Dre, Arabian Prince, Yella was all supposed to be partners, and Easy well all, all gonna be partners in the in the uh, company. Well, Easy, Jerry talked him out of that, brought in these new contracts. Remember, I just I gave him some good contracts, but Jerry changed the contracts and put in them contracts. I call them the shish kebab contracts. Cause it makes you fuck one, fuck another one, fuck another one, fuck another one. Everybody <laughs> on this big ass shish kebab, okay? I call it the dick, the, the disc kebab, uh, okay? And they, um, they all, everybody getting screwed because when the, when I saw when I saw the contract, every time any money was exchanged, because Jerry Bannon's Ruthless Records, Easy E. NWA and all the members individually. Understand this. Mm. So okay. got a check from the distributor for a million dollars, Jerry got 20%. When mm. Ruthless paid Easy E, he got 20%. <laughs> <When> Ruthless <laughs> paid um Je- Cube Jerry, whoever. 20%. Mm-hmm. Okay. Damn. When Dre when Dre got paid as a producer, he got 20%. So every time he was like the government, every time money oh, was exchanged, gosh. he got twenty percent. Okay, mm. and most youngsters don't realize the impact of that twenty percent until you look up. Damn, this dude got more money than we did. If they got a million bucks, he got two hundred thousand off the top. Mm. If he got a million dollar contract, he got two hundred thousand. Now they only got eight hundred thousand. So it's easy to get half of that. For his personal, damn, get four hundred. Damn, damn. So, uh, because that sounds almost illegal. It is. And it has to be now. I mean, do those things even exist anymore? Huh? Could someone even do that anymore in twenty twenty one? If you if you don't have anybody around you that could uh, could negotiate that contract, yeah, they can do it. Yeah, being done. But it was illegal back then because it's, it's the term for it. But uh, again, if nobody, if everybody just so happy to get their eighty percent, okay. If you so happy, if you if you if if you got, I don't know, a hundred thousand coming, and you got you got you look all you look at is at the eighty grand you got coming, okay. Ain't nobody thought about it. he got twenty from him, twenty from him, twenty from him, twenty from him. So by the time he got through, he got eighty grand a damn self. Mm. Plus what he got from ruthless. Plus what he got so and so. Okay, and because that happened, um, and the mistake was being made. Usually, like I said before, when you was off camera, usually in a in a big time group. Okay, um, the groups, the lead singer gets pulled away and go solo. Okay, mm-hmm. happens all the time, and right. you, because of, because the lead singer, the uh, the lead singer. Is usually the focal person of the group. It usually works for them because usually there's other producers that make the lead singer look good. Well, in this case, Dre's music was the 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 uh, the 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 the, um, the catalyst behind Ruthless. It wasn't Easy's voice. Got he it. The, he was the lead singer or the lead vocalist, but it wasn't because he was Michael Jackson or Lionel Richie. Because Dre put him out there, and his music made him sound good. Okay, yeah. so when you lose Dre's music, okay, and Jerry didn't understand that because that's a typical rock and roll R and B move to pull the lead singer and keep every, you know and keep him to yourself. Fuck everybody else. Okay, you know, like they said in Temptations, like they, was that done? was the Temptations. Uh, he's the leader. Y'all just backup singers. Okay. But that, that wasn't the case with Ruthless. Mm. Okay? They all, they were a unit. Cube was part of that unit. He made that happen. Dre made that happen. That was a powerful unit. Okay? So when you start picking things apart, and almost everybody was cool till he get till he came into the group. Okay? Everything was cool until he came to the group. Then all of a sudden, um, Easy got that, that pocket thing. He, like he played with me all the time. You know, it... it it used to be a time when Easy owed me money. You know, I always pat his pockets. Oh man, I ain't got no money. Oh man, I ain't got no money. Okay, 
But if he had, if he wanted to buy something, he go to his goddamn ankles, okay, and pull his money out. So Jerry became his new socks, okay. <laughs> oh man, go see Jerry. Oh man, go see Easy. They were playing that game back and forth, as you can see with the, straight out of Compton. Cube had to go back and forth all the time trying mm-hmm. to get money because he couldn't get nobody to uh, nobody would cooperate. So. Um, not your nigga. Fuck that. Hit your hit your ankles. Don't come to me with that bullshit. And when when Jerry came around, the contracts changed, and he would give people what they wanted that they wanted to have. I mean, you understand this, man? You got guys who never had fifty grand before. So you give mm-hmm. somebody fifty grand, yep. okay? But they entitled to eighty or hundred, okay? If you give somebody fifty. And a nigga, enti- although he entitled to a whole lot more, shit, you still, um, you still doing great. Mm-hmm. You're still up, right? Uh, so um, that just makes, uh, you know, that that's just, uh, you know, that just makes it, um, that just makes it that much more um, crazy in the long run. Put it mm-hmm. that way. 